Hi there, my name is Gardner, your friendly neighborhood developer advocate with Linode. Today I wanted to show you three easy ways to get set up with copying files between your Linode and your local machine or vice versa. Let's get started. So let's go ahead and log into our Linode cloud dashboard. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a generic Linode. So we're going to click on create and go to Linode. Now it doesn't have to be anything special. Uh, I'm just going to go with Ubuntu 2004 LTS. And then we're going to go ahead and choose a region. This region can be wherever you'd like, uh, but the closer it is geographically to you, the more performant the connection will be between the two. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pick Newark, New Jersey, because I'm in the Northeast United States. Uh, let's go down to Linode plan and I'm just going to pick a one gigabyte Linode because uh, there's no need to pick anything higher. This is just for demonstration purposes. And we're going to call this SSH demo and let's give it a root password. Don't need any of these other ones. We're just going to hit create. And this is really just so that we have a Linode to connect to so that we can copy files back and forth. First, let's talk about SCP or secure copy. On Linux, Mac and Windows, this command is going to be the same, but how you use it is going to be different. On Linux and Mac OS, you're going to go ahead and open up your terminal emulator uh, and then use the SCP command. On Windows, you're going to open up PowerShell. SCP stands for Secure Copy, and what it does is it uses the SSH's built-in uh, SFTP functionality in order to copy files between your local machine and your remote machine. So what we're going to do here, uh, first of all, is we're going to copy our IP address, and then we're going to open our terminal emulator. Now, like I said before, if you're on uh, Mac or Linux, you can use a terminal emulator. If you're on Windows, you can use PowerShell. Um, but now that we're here, uh, what we want to do is uh, we're going to list the files in this directory. So ls, uh, you can see that we have readme.md. Um, and if we cat readme.md, you can see there's a little bit of boilerplate readme file stuff in there. Uh, we're going to clear the screen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy that readme file. Uh, right to our Linode. So let's do SCP readme and then we're going to do root at uh, the IP address of our Linode and do note here that uh, if you have a Linode set up uh, and it's using a different username uh, in order to log in then you're going to want to put that there instead of root. So it, let's say that I had my Linode set up using uh, a Gardner Bryant or a G Bryant uh, user account, I would put gbryant instead of root. Uh, however you log in via SSH, you're going to use the same username at IP address or even domain name um, format that you would use to log in via SSH. So now we can go ahead and hit SCP, read me, and hit enter. Now of course that didn't work because uh, you have to actually be logged in uh, first and you have to have the fingerprint of the uh, of the remote machine added to your allowed list. So we're going to go ahead and do that by just logging in via SSH. And then we're going to type in our password, the one we specified as the master password in the uh, previous steps. And now we're logged in and you can see that there's nothing here. Um, so if we um, exit and clear the screen. Okay, so now we're ready to do this. SCP readme.md root at and then the IP address of our user account. Uh, we're going to put a colon in and then what we're going to do is put in the path that we actually want to copy the readme file to. Now if we put in um, a tilde, that's going to be the home directory of the user that we log in as. Uh, if we put in slash uh, root, then that's going to be the root directory. If we were logged in as let's say G Bryant, we would do slash home slash G Bryant. Um, you're obviously going to have to put it somewhere where the uh, the user you're logging in as has write privileges. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and hit enter here. And it's going to ask for the password for the user we're logging in as. And there we go. You can see that we've copied uh, the readme file. Now, let's actually go ahead and SSH back into the machine. And uh, let's clear that so it's not so messy. And then we're just going to say uh, cat readme. And there you go. You can see that we have, we're logged in on our remote machine and we have uh, the file that we just copied. But what if we want to do things in reverse? Uh, you can see here, I've actually just removed the uh, readme file from my local machine. Uh, so if we wanted to, we could do SCP uh, root at, and then the IP address colon, and we can just say readme here, dot MD, and then we can uh, 
do dot and that dot is going to be the current directory that we're in um, and we hit enter and now you can see if we ls we have readme here we can cat that right into the terminal boom it's that easy and this is good for like copying files from a, a, a local directory or whatever uh, you can do scp readme or you can actually do uh, you can do scp uh, asterisk dot md you can copy any md file uh, to your uh, root at a local drive right or your remote drive um, that would work uh, you can copy recursively so as you might have been able to glean from how I'm doing this, uh, the SCP command actually accepts two operands. Uh, the first one is the file that you're going to copy, and the second operand is going to be the uh, the destination of what you're copying. Um, so readme.md to uh, root at whatever IP address, uh, the, and then the path name, or you can flip that around and have, copy a remote file to the local machine. This is great. You can also use any standard, uh, you know, asterisks, uh, tilds, all that stuff in your uh, operands, and you can copy lots of files all at once. Um, that's also really great. But what if you want a more GUI driven solution? What if you want to copy files back and forth and not have to worry so much about uh, remembering how these commands work? Uh, there are two great options for that. Um, on my local machine, I'm actually going to go ahead and install FileZilla. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm on uh, Manjaro, by the way. We're going to go ahead and uh, download FileZilla. So FileZilla is done installing. So let's go ahead and uh, copy our IP address. And we're going to go back to FileZilla, put in our host, type in root and the password. And I believe you just want port 22 and then go ahead and connect. Yep. And we can trust the host here. And there you go. Now we have uh, all of our files here that we've copied over. Now, if you're familiar with uh, FileZilla, you'll see that we actually have uh, our remote uh, directory tree here. Um, and we can actually uh, go out of that directory tree and we can move around. We can go to, you know, slash media. There's nothing there go to home. I don't think there's anything there. Um, but we actually have full access to our file system here. Um, and we can copy files over through FileZilla as well. Uh, let's go to root. Let's copy over something like uh, this smaller MKV file, I guess. Why not? There you go. We've copied that file over. It's very straightforward. It's very simple. And before we go any further, if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding it useful, hit that like button. It really helps out uh, the, our show here on the Linode YouTube channel. And you can also subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. What I actually would like to do is actually set up uh, our remote machines um, file system as a local file system so that you can access it as if it was part of your actual file system. This is something that I'm really excited about. This is a tool that I use every day in my business uh, and uh, in my programming. Um, I love this tool. So we're going to go ahead and open up our terminal again. Boom, boom. So I'm going to go into my remote directory uh, and in my home folder, and I'm going to add a Linode demo uh, directory. So we have make dir Linode demo. And you can see here that I have a couple different uh, ones already set up. Uh, I have my heavy element set up, which is actually my business Linode that I have set up. And then I have one of my clients here uh, set up as well. Uh, these are two different Linodes that are set up, uh, but you can also see that I have Linode demo here. Um, now what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to run the command uh, sshfs dash o id map user. And we're going to do root at and again, if you have a different user account, you're going to want to use that instead of root. Uh, and then we're going to do uh, dot slash uh, Linode dash demo. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to create a file system from our SSH connection. Uh, and it's going to use the same uh, SCP protocol uh, to actually just make uh, the remote user account set up as our local user or on our on our file system here. So now we're going to hit enter. 
Oh, whoops, I forgot to add the mount point, of course. Uh, now we could add this to be the uh, the user directory. There we go. So it, you can't use the tilde, you have to use an absolute path. All right, so now we're set up. So now what we can do is open our file explorer, right? So here we are in our file explorer. Let's go to remote, let's go to Linode demo, and there we have our readme file. And just like that, we can actually make a modification to it. Uh, we've modified the file on our local machine and it's reflected on our remote machine. So now if we uh, SSH into the machine, of course, SSH into the remote machine, and we um, cat readme.md. You can see we've modified the file on our local machine and it's reflected on the re our remote machine. That's awesome. Uh, so now like we can literally uh, use this in our commands. So if we exit here, so I'm here in my home directory now and I have some um, modification, uh, I have some uh, OBS files here. I have modprobe.txt. Let's just copy modprobe.txt to our uh, remote machine. So we're going to uh, cp modprobe.txt. And notice that this is not scp. This is just the copy command, cp uh, modprobe.txt. Of course, I typed it in wrong. Modprobel. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that was a typo. And then we're going to say uh, remote because it's remote, and then um, this is where I mounted it to, uh, and then little node demo. And now if we copy that, you can see that it's there, and blah, 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 we have a, a mod probe dump right there. And you can also, you don't have to just use this, you can use uh, your uh, thing here. So let's say that I wanted to copy this uh, v image here. I can just literally go like this and copy, drag, and drop. And now it's copied. So if we SSH back into the machine, you can see if we ls, we now have modprobel.txt, we have readme.md, and we have screenshot from simple AAC recording. So we have all those files here. We and it's mounted as a local file share. So we can just drag and drop back and forth, no problems uh, at all. So you're actually gonna have to install SSHFS, which is a requirement if you want to do this solution. On most Linux distros, it's just called SSHFS. On Fedora, it's called Fuse-SSHFS. On macOS, you're going to want to use the Mac Fuse utility, uh, which is pretty simple and straightforward to install. Now, on Windows, you're actually going to want to install the uh, SSHFS Win utility, as well as its dependency WinFSP. Once you've installed these apps, go ahead and open the File Explorer, click on Computer, and then click the Map Network Drive section. And here you can type in uh, two backslashes, sshfs slash root at, and then the IP address of your Linode, followed by the actual uh, location you want to mount. So in this case, uh, slash root. Again, if you're using a different user account, you're going to want to do home slash user account or wherever its home directory is. Uh, then you're going to want to choose a drive letter and then type in your username, which is root in our case, uh, and then also the password. Um, and there you go. Now you have remote access uh, locally and it's mapped to a file system on your local machine. It is so convenient. I absolutely love doing this. I've actually set this up with my Steam Deck as well. Um, I find that this is just the easiest and simplest way to copy files back and forth. Just having your remote machines file system mounted locally on your machine. So there you go. I thought that this was pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that uh, this will be useful for other people who are looking for similar solutions to your problems. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next one.